Welcome to DeFine, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. In today's episode, we speak to Tokamak, the Wizards of Liquidity Direction. Tokamak offers a new method for creating DeFi liquidity, as well as a more decentralized market making service for investors and exchanges alike. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of DeFine with Tokamak, where we have Carson, Bruno, and Manuel joining us to tell us a little bit more about what they do and diving into deeper discussions about what makes Tokamak so good at liquidity direction. So without further ado, I pass it over to you guys. Let's start with a quick intro from all of you, starting with Carson. And if you guys can just introduce yourselves, how you got into crypto and what you do at Tokamak. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, appreciate you having me here. Uh, excited to be chatting with uh, the staked out community. Uh, so Carson Cook, uh, founder of Tokamac. Uh, my background is technology, did a PhD in physics, master's in electrical engineering, got into um, the trading world uh, while I was doing my degree um, initially in the FX uh, side of side of things. Uh, ultimately joined McKinsey after, after school, did about three, three and a half years in the banking, fintech, financial services space. Saw a lot of things that work well in traditional finance, a lot, whole lot of things that don't work well in traditional finance, uh, and really uh, was monitoring the crypto ecosystem kind of in the 2016, 2017 timeframe. Uh, left McKinsey to start a firm called Fractal full time in January 2018, which focused on uh, uh, market making and prop trading in the space uh, across crypto, starting with uh, centralized exchanges uh, and then quickly evolving into DeFi sort of before it was really a thing. Uh, early on, uh, we were a major market maker on 0x and a number of other protocols. Uh, and then as AMMs expanded and um, and DeFi summer took off in, in 2020, we found ourselves in a, in a very uh, unique position watching all this develop and asking important kind of core uh, concept questions about what, uh, what exactly does market making and liquidity providing look like in a future decentralized world. Uh, and out of those uh, investigations, um, that's really where where Tokamak was born, which we'll be getting in, into shortly. Amazing. Pleasure to have you with us. And over to you, Manuel. Hey, guys. Uh, so short intro. My background is also in electrical engineering. And I joined this space really early on. And eventually, I started to do research on DeFi before DeFi was DeFi. And after working for a few funds, I joined Tokamak uh, early this year. Welcome, welcome. Great to hear. And Bruno, why don't you round us off? Yeah, hi. Um, so I have a bit of a tech, uh, tech background in the last years before joining Tokamak, um, which was a little bit by chance. I've been in crypto since, I think, more focused since like 2016-ish, 17-ish. And I really started to look into it. Um, and then by a little bit of a chance, um, being neighbors with Carson, I got more and more involved. And then, um, yeah, ended up working at Tokamak. And then like most people um, in crypto, I like wear many hats, but I would say that I'm focused mostly on tokenomics at Tokamak and general strategy. Great. Very lucky to have a broad range of experiences and perspectives with us today, uh, as well as learning a little bit more about how you guys are basically DeFi natives. Uh, that's very cool to see. So for some of our newer users, before we just dive straight in, maybe you could give us a bit of an idea about what Tokamak is as an idea and how you synthesize that idea itself, and then take us on the journey of how you took that seed and made it into what Tokamak is today. Yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, I'll kick things off here. So um, I mentioned before the um, sort of position uh, that we were sitting in and what we were viewing in the space by making markets and providing liquidity. And really what I mean by that is we were engaging with different token projects, um, putting liquidity out into the market so that people could buy and sell or really get access into and out of different tokens. And one of the uh, common issues we saw across all of these founding teams was that <clears throat> they were spending uh, an, a pretty crazy amount of their time and mind share um, worried about liquidity. And if you if you kind of pull back or zoom out far enough, it's pretty easy to see why. Um, Web3 products uh, and projects uh, made the decision to separate their users from their, their, uh, their product or their core offering with a token. So token users have to... Um, 
get access to a token in order to um, access uh, a product or at least access a number of the features of these various products and platforms. And so what that means is uh, that liquidity or access to um, uh, market making services is not just an issue for traders and investors like it is in most of the traditional finance space, but here it's actually a core uh, issue that all users, uh, including other protocols, um, have to uh, address in order to um, gain access and and uh, value out of this ecosystem. So as we were seeing this sort of issue, um, we were looking at um, you know a number of new financial primitives um, pop up within DeFi. So for example, Uniswap, um, Uniswap, SushiSwap, these decentralized versions of an exchange, um, so sort of a decentralized coin base. We started asking the question of is there a better model for market making or liquidity providing that is more decentralized and DeFi native or a financial primitive that these projects can tap into rather than doing what they what they were doing at the time? And at the time, most of these projects were doing one of two things and often both. One would be they would engage with a centralized market maker uh, and, and generally pay um, pretty significant amounts uh, in order to secure liquidity. So bids and offers out in the markets. Um, so this might be in the form of a loan with call options or in direct monthly payments, but it was quite expensive and, and onerous for a lot of the, the different projects. Second thing they would do is something more DeFi native, but um, in a very expensive manner, which is they would establish what's called a pool two, which just means um, a Uniswap or a sushi swap pool, and they would pay significant amounts of their own token in order to secure that liquidity. Both of these things were expensive and weren't really operating in a decentralized model. Uh, and so with Tokamak, we said, how do we actually deploy a decentralized version of a market maker? So sort of uh, conceptually a decentralized jump trading or decentralized Citadel from traditional finance, just to get sort of the brain thinking about what this, this looks like. Uh, and ultimately, the way we envisioned that was we were going to disaggregate the three things that usually centralize at a market maker. So usually at a successful market maker, which is a, a prop trading firm that provides liquidity, they centralize capital, they centralize strategic market knowledge and, and governance over what can be traded and where, uh, and they centralize the, the trading technology and expertise. We said, let's decentralize those, let liquidity providers uh, provide capital from anywhere in the world. Um, that capital will be deployed according to the uh, governance or what we call liquidity direction of the liquidity directors, which hold our native token called TOCA, and can route around uh, this liquidity wherever it's needed across DeFi. Uh, and then last, if and where needed, we have participants called pricers that actually uh, uh, set the bids and offers and inject pricing where needed into the market. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That's a, that's a very interesting and comprehensive way to break it down. I, I liked how you approached it from a DAO perspective, almost as though Tokamak is a service provider. Um, for, I guess, the flip side, maybe you could highlight a bit about how token holders play their role within this ecosystem and how they can also benefit from what the impacts of contributing to that ecosystem are. Yeah, uh, great question. So we really, as you said, we approach this as a DAO, or in a lot of ways, we were thinking of this as another layer of the internet. Um, so really, we think of, of Tokamak as a utility or, or really key infrastructure in the space. So um, one important sort of prior, and then I'll get right into um, kind of how we thought about this for who the token holders generally will be and, and how they benefit is, uh, though I, I sort of positioned all of this as a decentralized market making firm <clears throat> really what we're looking at is that web as web 3 is replacing web 2 or really as web 2 is evolving into web 3 you have value flow replacing data flow so where there used to be uh, data packets flowing around now you actually have tokens moving around and needing to be swapped into other tokens in order to interact uh, with other other protocols uh, and in that model the role of bandwidth is effectively played by liquidity. Um, so we sort of saw this as a liquidity bandwidth layer, and that's why we we think of this more as, yes, it's a decentralized market maker, but really this is an infrastructure bandwidth layer uh, to a Web3 uh, value-based internet. And so within that, it became very important from the beginning for us to use a DAO approach where you can tokenize not only the ownership over this uh, key liquidity infrastructure, but also the control and direction of the liquidity. Um, now, who and why would want these things, right? Um, first off, uh, individuals can and, and do hold TOCA and can benefit from 
the revenue generated from deploying liquidity. But often it's other um, infrastructure layers or protocols that want to hold these tokens um, and, uh, and utilize the benefits. So for example, different exchanges, different DEXs may want to have a supply of TOCA so that they can use the governance power to route the liquidity to the relevant exchange. So think Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve, for example, routing the, the liquidity or the inventory within Tokamak to their venue, which of course gives them more liquidity, therefore better pricing, therefore uh, more trade, trading or transactional volume and more fees generated. Um, on the other hand, different governance, uh, uh, really different projects and their governance token holders <clears throat> and core teams want to have enough TOCA so that they can um, both source and direct liquidity to wherever it's most useful for their project token. On a couple other dire directions, uh, trading firms and venture capital firms are interested, VCs especially, because if they have tokens, they can then go to new projects that soon are going to launch a token and say, hey, we have stockpiled tokenized liquidity, so to speak, with TOCA. And as soon as your project goes live, we can vote our token, which naturally through the uh, mechanics of how Tokamak works, which might, might be a little too deep for this call, it will increase incentives for inventory of that token to be supplied to Tokamak. Uh, and then it can be controlled down into Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve, Balancer, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, another really interesting holder of these things that that maybe early on wasn't wasn't super apparent, but is becoming more and more apparent <clears throat> are are stablecoin projects. And stablecoins for a long time have been focused on the Curve ecosystem because it helps them uh, bring stability and hold the peg of their token as they control emissions within the Curve ecosystem. After they are sort of move beyond just being focused on stability, they have to move into utilization, utility, pairings across DeFi, making sure that users have a reason to hold their token um, and to uh, transact with their token. And that's where Tokamak can be very helpful. So that's another good example of a more of a protocol-based um, participant that has a reason to hold Toka to then secure um, liquidity and really utilization of their of uh, uh, their stable coin sort of across DeFi. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're you're really targeting the length and breadth of everyone that could need liquidity, which extends from institutions to DAOs, also even breaks down like more established DAOs and newer projects that might just be starting out. Yeah, I really I really like that layer that's created on top. And maybe, Manuel, you could talk to us a little bit about how you approach these newer projects. Of course, you have the, the famous Reactor events where you get lots of traction and voters and lots of projects reaching out to you to be a part of it. But I was just wondering if it does work in the other way at all and what that process might look like for someone who would like to reach out to you guys and pursue this liquidity direction. Well, the onboarding process is pretty straightforward, and it's usually other DAOs approaching Tokamak. And as soon as they do the DAO-to-DAO -DAO onboarding process, uh, we essentially allow all of them to participate in the core event. And then in the core event, it's just the centralized decision-making where Tokyo holders decide where they are going to vote. Uh, in the first core event, there were really no incentives. But then we started to see the rise of bribing platforms and that introduced incentives to token holders that changed the game a little bit. In the first core event, there were no incentives, so VoteMac, which is a platform that's external to TokenMac, didn't exist. And it was interesting to look at the token allocations and after, for example, Alchemix announcing that they were going to distribute an NFT to Toke holders that voted on their reactor, you could see immediately the token allocations in votes uh, moving to their favor. So on the second core event, things became a little bit more complex. So we were still in a bull market and VoteMac was born. And again, totally external to TokenMac and we hold no control over that platform. And we started to see a bribing escalation that went to heights that we really didn't expect. There were bribes in the orders of millions, and uh, it was interesting to see the game theory of how DAOs also coordinate between themselves in order to secure a token reactor at Tokenac. Here's a good point to um, add to that: that in the the ultimate goal, or like the the goal for Tokenac, would be to 
um, also have this like kind of reactor spin up to be like fully permissionless, right? So that in the future we pretty much um, leave this this concept of core events, um, but there would still be like um, a uh, kind of an aspect of community vote on these reactors on these new reactors that can be spun up. Um, we might go into this a little bit later in the call uh, because this has more to do with the uh, new tokenomics that we just rolled out. I was just going to touch on something really quickly with regard to just simplification of what the average DeFi user can expect out of TokenEck and how can they participate in the ecosystem. And something that I think that it's really important, it's simplification and abstraction. And for example, you guys at StakeDAO, uh, I was an early user of your strategies, and you simply uh, allow your users to, without any troublesome additional tasks, deposit an asset into one of your strategies and earn yield. Here, we allow liquidity providers to deposit their assets on the token reactor side, and all the LP process is fully abstracted by TokenMac. And all that they know is that they are earning yield on their token that will be deployed to decentralized exchanges. So then on the other side of the reactor, we have the liquidity directors. And they are the ones that decide where that liquidity is flown to. And additionally, they collateralize the IL risks that are associated with it. Something that I'm really excited about is, for example, the integration of, let's say, Curve V2. So considering that uh, Curve V2 was always a playground, for stablecoin deployments where you have negligible IL risks. I'm really interested in thinking about TokenMac as this additional Lego uh, where you can deploy liquidity to TokenMac and essentially deploy it then to volatile pairs on Curve V2 without the IL risks that are currently liable to all liquidity providers. Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like a really clever way to make sure the service is provided. And I guess, like, if I'm thinking as a DAO, how would I get access to the liquidity? And maybe you could talk a little bit about what's happening under the hood. So taking from all of the different places, say, ETH is staked or protocol stablecoins are staked and how it ultimately ends up on an AMM like SushiSwap, Uniswap or Curve. Sure, I'll, I'll get things started and I'll discuss um, both the way you sort of get the process rolling uh, as a DAO, uh, a little bit about now and in the near future, how that's done. And then second, just operationally, how, how as you were saying, things end up down uh, at the actual AMM level. So if you are a DAO, thus far, we've been using the core events that were mentioned earlier on this all. Um, so it stands for collateralization of reactor events. And it's essentially a way that via token governance, we enable uh, TOCA holders to vote on which reactors um, they would like to see next. Once the kind of winning uh, projects uh, get a reactor, uh, the reactor is turned on and that opens it up for two different types of deposits. Uh, TOCA deposits are really TOCA votes to the reactor, and that's what we call the liquidity directors. Um, and then uh, deposits of the actual token, uh, which is called the, the liquidity providers, not surprisingly. Um, that process in the past has been done via a doubt to doubt swap uh, and still with core three, that, that's what we're doing. So we need to have a certain amount of sidelined assets to be able to cover um, the IL risk for the liquidity providers. And we bootstrap that via a token Mac to DAO XYZ swap uh, as we turn on the reactors. In the near future, um, we, we are planning to do a core four, but after that we want to go to more of a decentralized reactor spin up model um, where people can enter a token that they'd like to see the project for. And once it gains sufficient votes, it can be turned on. Um, now, the way, without going into too crazy much detail, the way that those will be bootstrapped in terms of our sideline cap or our protected capital that makes sure the LPs are protected from impermanent loss is via a new mechanic called uh, ACC um, and ACC TOCO, which if, if any anyone listening is interested in learning more, um, you should check out our Medium article that goes in great detail on this. But effectively, that will make sure that we have enough protocol-owned assets um, to protect liquidity providers' capital uh, that we deploy. Getting a little more tangible in terms of the actual deployments of these things, once you have token A, B, C in a reactor uh, and token votes uh, associated with that reactor that are uh, directing liquidity to, say, SushiSwap, 
Um, the system of smart contracts within Tokamak pulls that ABC token and pulls the equivalent amount of ETH or USDC uh, or FRAX um, to deploy with the ABC token uh, as two-sided uh, trading market liquidity down in SushiSwap or Curve or uh, or Uniswap. <clears throat> so conceptually, it's you be sick. We source from a single-sided perspective all of the individual assets, and then we have a system of smart contract that pulls the right combination of those assets to deploy as LP liquidity uh, in the underlying AMMs. Yeah. Okay. And and in that way, I think I think you touched on it really really briefly. Um, if you could just expand about how the impermanent loss is prevented for depositors using that mechanism. Yeah, absolutely. So you can think of this as Tokamak always has two different buckets of any token. So if you have ABC token for ABC DAO, um, we both have liquidity providers or LP provided uh, tokens in ABC, and we have protocol owned assets that Tokamak owns free and clear. And the goal of Tokamak is always to deploy the assets that Tokamak owns free and clear, plus as much uh, leverage, so to speak, via LP capital that we can safely deploy given the volatility of the underlying assets. So bringing back kind of from uh, financial speak, what this means is the amount that's put at risk to impermanent loss is what Tokamak owns free and clear. Uh, And then we're always protecting the LP, the depositors capital, by instead pushing the IL surplus and deficit um, as the market moves around over to what Tokamak owns rather than exposing the uh, liquidity providers uh, to that type of volatility. Yeah, that's very clear. Okay, if you don't mind, uh, let's, uh, let's jump ahead. What are some of the things that you guys are thinking about implementing at the moment or in the short to medium term, as well as looking at things what you mentioned, such as the permissionless way of deploying reactors, um, and lastly, the new tokenomics. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll start and then I'll let um, Manuel and Bruno chime in on, on uh, any additional details. So um, I'll start with actually the, the new tokenomics. So uh, ACC, which I alluded to, is a new token. The reason we call it ACC is it's short for Um, accretion, accumulation, and acceleration, which all has to do with this concept at Tokamak of advancing towards what we call the singularity. So the singularity is um, the theoretical moment in time where Tokamak no longer needs any third-party liquidity provider uh, capital. The the protocol just owns enough assets free and clear to be sort of the liquidity bandwidth layer uh, of DeFi and provide sustainable bandwidth, liquidity bandwidth uh, across the ecosystem. the way we, that we advance there is by growing our protocol-owned assets. And that can, of course, be accomplished by deploying uh, liquidity, earning spread, earning uh, fees, earning reward tokens like CRV, CVX, Sushi, etc. Um, but it can be advanced much, much quicker um, with some innovative tokenomics. And so ACC is actually a token that we hand to depositors that give us not an LP deposit with a liability, but actually tokens that they say, here, 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 Tokamak, this ABC token is yours forevermore. We mint ACC um, according to the current market uh, pricing of, of the ABC token and the ACC token. We hand that back to the user. Uh, and then this means that every deposit is now growing, not just our TVL or our, um, our LP capital, but actually our protocol owned assets. And that's a much quicker way to advance towards the singularity. Um, There's a number of reasons that users will want to do this, um, one of which includes minting bonuses, which is anytime we need more protocol-owned assets or want more uh, protocol-owned assets, uh, we can uh, increase a minting bonus for those that uh, mint ACC by giving us XYZ token. Um, Additionally, we are refining um, exactly the split here, but there's going to be some portion of the revenues generated from Tokamak that will be used to basically buy Toka. Uh, and then distribute um, some portion of those revenues out to the ACC holders. Um, So this is really the sort of V2 of our tokenomics. We're super excited. This is going to be the next sort of step function for us in terms of of evolution uh, of the protocol. And it really advances us to deploying um, predominantly protocol-owned assets as opposed to uh, uh, TVL and and borrowed liquidity. Um, 
These things then are going to enable these more permissionless reactor spin-ups, or, or I'll call it decentralized reactor spin-ups, which um, a project can now go and instead of having to secure, you know, pay significantly plus secure the ETH or the stablecoin side to pay with their token, instead they can just attract enough interest from token holders to vote something on, and then the token sort of or the the token reactor spins itself up in terms of a system of incentives that attracts token votes as well as the ABC token. Uh, uh, liquidity to enter the protocol uh, and then be deployed across DeFi wherever needed. And I might add a little detail here, and that is um, we also like now are introducing uh, refined reward um, logic. So the current reward logic was like focused on keeping the reactors balanced. So meaning that um, the rewards are like, uh, you know, relative to like the size of the reactor and the balance of like the token stake to, to a specific reactor and the assets provided by LPs. We're now introducing two refinements to these um, to these uh, equations that will take into account the revenue generated by the specific reactor or the LP asset. And on the other hand, we'll take into account the balance of the uh, protocol controlled assets and the LP provided assets. What this does is obviously like as a first step, the, the first, the most obvious one is that it helps Tokamak increase the uh, protocol owned assets. But on the other hand, this will also help um, balance more like the different kind of interests that different LDs might have, such as, for example, a DAO holding Toka and staking to a specific reactor versus just like a retail uh, liquidity director um, that these these incentives, they are like more fine tuned. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. I think I think many people are really eager to find out when this is going to be going live. Do you do you have the the alpha? When, sir? I'll start on the um, new tokenomic side. So while we were very much focused on explaining ACC here, there's actually several uh, steps to this, including I think as Bruno had had briefly mentioned, um, a refinement of emissions according to um, uh, revenue generation and utility to the tokamak protocol, um, uh, as well as an interesting sort of surplus management mechanic, which will make sure that all of our emissions go to um, uh, inventory that we can um, safely and usefully deploy across DeFi. These things will roll out over the coming weeks. So some of these changes are going to go into effect um, quite soon over the next, call it two to three weeks. Um, and then there'll be sort of phase two and phase three going all the way into uh, ACC and ACC TOCA, which um, is essentially a vote locking capability um, um, for uh, the TOCA tokens. These things will be rolling out over, say, the next six to eight weeks, um, subject to uh, a, a probably slight refinements as, as we go into kind of our, our fine tuning of parameters for these things. Um, so. Uh, starting in the next couple of weeks, people will see the effects of this, uh, and then uh, we'll be legging up over the, the next two to three months. Um, anyone that wants to read about sort of the, the approximate sequencing, and then importantly, a lot of the details can, can see it in our Medium article uh, titled uh, Accumulation uh, with a capital ACC. Um, as far as the new um, reactor approach to spin up, uh, that. I will say is probably a couple months out still, um, maybe three months out. Um, but people can look forward to core for sometime fairly soon. Uh, we're still finalizing the date, but that will be uh, closer to today, and will not be nearly the ways between as what we did between core two and core three. Yeah, so I was just going to add that ACC token will also uh, enable a governance function for standing up the permissionless reactors. Because obviously you can have governance attacks that uh, dilute Tokamax revenue. So ACC token holders will ultimately also have a say while setting up these permissionless reactors. That's amazing. Wow, it really sounds like you guys have got a lot for us to look forward to over the coming weeks. And I'm sure many of the people listening would like to keep in touch and just make sure that the, the first ones to, you know, know about any kind of new service that you might be releasing. Mm -hmm. If they were to try and find out a bit more about Tokamak itself, generally utilizing Tokamak or keep up to date with the latest updates, can you just let us know where they'd be going? So if you are interested, keep 
an eager ear out. And we'll post all of these links in the descriptions for everywhere this episode is available as well. Uh, anyone that's trying to understand uh, or learn more about Tokamak um, uh, can go to our Medium, where we have a lot of articles um, uh, spanning all the different concepts. And there's a pretty uh, deep rabbit hole to, fi- to fall down um, with Tokamak. Uh, also, we have a great community, um, so, so feel free to join our Discord. Um, on the weekends, we have something called the Leaky Reactor, which is sort of our uh, pseudo bar um, on the weekends, where, where pilots, which are community members, gather. Um, to discuss things more informally. Uh, and we often, uh, the core team usually jumps in on, on Sunday at some point to discuss uh, new developments and, and new things that we're planning to launch. Um, and uh, always, uh, as always, just reach out uh, to the team. We're always happy to to help and and uh, happy to engage with new people trying to understand what it is that uh, that tokenized liquidity is and, and this uh, concept of liquidity bandwidth. Okay, thanks very much for coming on with us uh it was really a pleasure to to have you guys here you know learned a lot going into this episode i thought i knew uh about tokamak but had a few questions and I, they've been thoroughly clarified so really appreciate that thank you so much really appreciate it thank you for hosting us thank you if any of the viewers listening you know enjoyed that episode drop a like drop a subscribe and if you have any questions or people you'd like to see on the next episode of defund shout us out on twitter discord telegram and we'll be sure to get them on for you that's it for now see you on the next episode of defund <laughs>